Hey, everybody. Welcome to Adobe Live and today's Adobe Spotlight. My name is Emily, and I'm so excited to be hosting Jay Tips today. Jay, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing great. Um, you know, we had a little few technical difficulties, but we here. We here. <laughs> yeah. Chat, we're excited that you're here. Thank you for sticking around and waiting for us. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are here, I've seen people on Behance and YouTube. Um, drop your comments or questions, your shout outs, anything in the chat, and we'll be incorporating that. But we have a really exciting stream and interview lined up for you. So we're really excited mm -hmm. to jump into it. Um, so, and also if you're not following along on Adobe Live on Instagram, YouTube, Behance, make sure that you are so you don't miss any updates uh, and upcoming shows. So let's get into it. So J Tips, could you tell us a little bit about your history and how you got to where you are today in your career? Um, I'm a musician. I'm a father. I always say I'm a father first. I'm from the Bronx, New York. Um, I'm a self-taught designer. Um, I, I always tell people I didn't go to school for design. I went to school at YouTube University. So I just I taught myself how to be self-sufficient, taught myself how to, you know, how to wear the things I wanted to wear, do the things I wanted to do. And um, I've been able to make a career out of it. Um, so I just I would just kind of sum it up and say I'm, I'm a creative. I'm an I'm a artist. I'm a creative from the Bronx, New York. And self-taught <laughs> at that, which is incredible. So yeah. Your beginning was in music, is that correct? Yeah, my my beginning, my roots um, come from just my love for music. I love it. And then how yeah. did that transition then over into graphic design or what really got you interested into moving that way? Uh, I, I think m music is art to me. And I think some of the, the best musicians in the world, they kind of go hand in hand with just art, art and fashion. And um, I just think as I've continued to to explore different avenues and how to promote myself better and how to get myself out there and how to get more notoriety. I've taught myself, you know what, maybe I need a, a logo. Maybe I need myself uh, to brand myself a little bit more. Maybe I need to leave something people with something that's physical instead of music that's in the cloud and it's in the world. Like maybe I need to give them an item. Um, so I started off like just trying to make myself cover art trying to make myself little posters that I could hang out. I could hang up when I went to like different cities and, and stuff like that. And then before you knew it, I was like, you know what, let me put that logo on a t-shirt and let me put this little pin on a hat and let me put this. And I just think it, it created such a, a thrill to want to do more in fashion that I just kept working, kept working, kept working. And before you know it, like people started to respond to it in a, a particular way. I tell my friends all the time we were, I had a show in about 2019 and I sat down at the table and I said, as much as I've given music, maybe I should just try to put out more clothes. And to be honest, it, the rest has been history. <laughs> yeah. Your website yeah. also, if anyone hasn't checked it out, you have a lot of your work up there. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah I have a lot of, I have a lot of my work up there. The, well, the stuff that hasn't sold out. Yeah. Hey, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. So how has music then influenced your design career? I know it was like inspiration and definitely what got you into it, but would you say there's any like cross uh, creativity between music to design and design to music that uh, maybe impacts the other? Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost like the universal language to me. I think mm -hmm. that music, music is how people communicate through genres and how people communicate through different walks of life. And so does fashion. So does art. Um, so I've tried to find like the marriage in between all of it and how do I exist? How do most of us exist? Some people exist in a, a consumption part of it. Some people can exist in a, a designing or influence and just different things. I just, I, I want to figure out, like, I always knew that if you can exist in music, you can exist in sneakers, you can exist in clothes if it's being done right. And all my favorite artists, like even going back in the days, like before it was the Kanye West and the Travis Scott and the Beyonce's and stuff like we all love vintage clothes. Like you go to all these vintage stores and you see Metallica shirts and you see Red Hot Chili Peppers and you see stuff. So I think it's just been music and fashion. It's, this has always been kind of hand in hand. So I just try to like try to indulge in it as much as I can. And it's an, it's influenced my whole life. That's incredible. Yeah, it's almost yeah. like physical representation of music that yeah. is being able to wear it on your on your shirt or on your feet or mm -hmm. something like that yeah we have uh questions in the chat they're asking do you play oh, an nice. instrument or sing oh no i i'm a hip-hop artist my only instrument is my voice <laughs> and you got it with you at all times though, which yeah. is great <laughs> yeah <laughs> um cool so you mentioned sneakers can you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about uh, maybe one of the first times that you uh started on a sneaker collaboration or a project oh nice yeah so um yeah so i was i was probably Hanging, I was hanging out at the Nike store. One of my friends, he worked 
one of my friends, he worked for Nike, um, the Nike lab in New York City before it closed. And, you know, whenever like the big honchos used to come from like Beaverton for Portland, the headquarters, they will always need like a, a few kids to kind of like pick their brain. And they wanted to like, hey, what do, how do you feel about this? What do you what do you think about these and stuff? And he would just invite me and he would be like, oh, they they're giving out fifty dollar Nike dot com gift cards if you want to come. And I was like, it's not even about the gift card. I want to be able to make some relationships and I want to learn more. So I would attend these focus groups and I would take people's contacts and I would just try to stay in, in touch with people. And you know, throughout my journey, I had all these contacts and I had all this knowledge and I started to build like a little community of people that I knew were doing different things outside of just collecting shoes that when I started like designing clothes and I started being able to exist in a fashion space, that was like the next lane I wanted to get into. I wanted to be able to see myself design my own shoes. So I used to do like Nike by use and Nike customs and stuff just like everybody else. But then I started designing hats and a few years later designing hats, I got a uh, a friend reached out to me and they said that I met at one of those focus groups that I said, like we're wow. trying the story back. And he was like, Hey, um, you know, my former boss, he's working with, um, with a company called, um, you, the people call it Sakoni, but the name is Sakoni. And, you know, they would love to talk to you. And when I took the call, I thought maybe they wanted me to make a hat for them just because I was doing so much in the hat space. So they were like, Oh, if you want to, if you want to make some shoes or you want to design or you got an interest in outlook, we'll love to see how you design. So I was like, oh, you know what? I'll, I'll be there on Thursday. Um, I'll so be there early. Just, yeah. So it, it kind of from that point, it just really, really started to build a fire inside of me. And it's you like one passion helped me get to another passion. And it brought me back to my ultimate love, which is shoes. That's incredible. So yeah. how did it feel then to transition from doing maybe more like t-shirt and hat, which is a little more one-dimensional, right? To be doing mm -hmm. a three-dimensional object, such as a shoe, right? There's like, I mean, there's the tread, there's the size, there's everything to it. Um, what did that feel like to transition into that space? Um, it's, it's surreal. It's surreal. Yeah. I think I think now that we live in such a social media age and we live in like, you know, there's so much AI and so much um, different ways that people can make things possible. I think to make something physical, it's almost like having a, like I'm a father, it's like having a baby. So to be able to turn like your, your CAD or your idea that you learn how to kind of put your ideas onto paper, because that's a process too, before you can learn any program, before you can learn anything, it's how does this idea come out of your mind and how does it come onto the computer? How does it come on the paper? But to be able to have your idea come into something that you can hold, something that you can sell, something that people can love and they can appreciate and they can have for years and bring them memories. It's a special feeling. Um, and I think it's something that I don't take for granted because these these ideas, they give other people memories for their whole life. So it's, you have a responsibility to be able to create um, and create with, with a lot of love and intent. And I think that there's a lot of people who um, just don't get to feel that joy, but they should. It's, it's, it's very special. <laughs> Looking at the the history of your career, are there some milestone shoes or projects that you worked on that you're like, man, those are the ones that I'm just so proud of, or I can't believe I had the <laughs> opportunity to work on? Um, Definitely my first shoe. I would say yeah. my first shoe just because it's so many, it's millions of sneakerheads. It's millions of people who collect shoes. It's millions of people who who go out to a, a baseball game and buy a baseball cap. But just to be able to design it and to be able to sell it and be able to market it, it's not many of those people. So just it's almost like just to be a part of this, this society of this secret Soci not really a secret society, but to be a part of this small community of people that have been privileged to be able to design is just special. Like people mention Michael Jordan and Jerry Lorenzo and and Virgil Abloh and Ronnie Feig, and then they mention J Tips. So it's very, very special for me to just kind of be able to be a part of a community that no matter what, for the rest of time, like J Tips dropped the shoe. Uh, so I just think that first shoe is just always going to be special to me. Yeah, to see your name in line with all the other greats is incredible. <laughs>
Um, just want to say, if you are joining now on Behance on YouTube, definitely jump in the chat. We are having a great live interview with Jay Tips, um, mm -hmm. and we are learning all of the tips and tricks and secrets. So definitely yeah. drop any questions or comments that you have in the chat as you're joining. Um, chat is really excited. They're shouting out your uh, 10, <laughs> 10 albums and projects to your name. I feel like yeah. that's a huge, a huge mention. Um, <laughs> Love it. Okay. So I was going to ask you a little bit about the Air Jordan 17. I heard that this potentially oh, wow. is your favorite shoe. Yeah. Um, can you fact check me? Is that your favorite shoe? And then yeah, what makes it special to you? It's my favorite shoe ever. Cool. Yeah. The, the Air Jordan 17, um, to me, it was the first time I seen luxury up close. I think being a kid, um, of course, like, you know, you know what Gucci is, you know what Louis Vuitton is because of just material and TV and movies and the Devil Wears Prada. Like, you know about those type of things. But to be able to to see something that it seemed like it was tailored for me, like this is my favorite basketball player in the whole wide world, and this sneaker comes in a suitcase, and this sneaker comes with a DVD that I can put inside of my PlayStation or I can put inside of my Xbox or, or my DVD player and... I'm able to wear these sneakers to shoe to school and every single person has something to say about whether it's the price or whether it was how'd you get those or be careful because I live in the Bronx. So a nice pair of shoes, they don't just tell you that they're nice to they tell you be careful because, you know, you never want to walk into no trouble or anything like that. So just to kind of feel that rush to feel everyone kind of breaking their necks and look at you and they have something to say about what you're wearing. That was the first time I ever felt that. And I was young. I believe I was 11, 12 years old. And wow. it just, I just felt like the man to have on a shoe that it wasn't normal for a 12 year old to have on. And it probably put my mom through some stress for me to, to know that I had on a $200 sh shoe going to school by myself. So. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Time. But design can be so much more. It can be an experience, yeah. right. And it can be a <laughs> lifestyle choice. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, awesome. So can you tell us a little bit about your heritage? Um, you're a mix mm -hmm. of Puerto Rican and African American from the Bronx. Yeah. How has your background shaped your creative expression? Um, it's it shaped it a lot. Um, just because I've I've been able to to be indulged in the Bronx. Like I think to be half I'm not as familiar with my Puerto Rican side as I am with my African American side, but it's like growing up in the Bronx is you are, it's a melting pot. It's so many different cultures. There's so many different things. And just to have two different predominant ones just in my DNA has always been special to me because it's almost like you just want to learn and you want to kind of be around people. And I also say too, like a lot of trends and a lot of things that do start in people in the community. So to be a part of the community and to be raised in the community and to be welcomed in the community, it's always been just, it's, it's been fun. It's been fun fun to just keep learning. Yeah. And be yeah. part of, yeah, such a <laughs> tight knit community. Yeah. Um, sorry, I was also reading through chat. Everyone's talking about yeah. how they feel about the 17 and yeah. that that was the shoe that made them fall in love with Jordan. So you're in good company here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, cool. So what's next for your career? Are there any upcoming projects or collaborations that you're particularly excited about? Um, right now, what I'm super excited about, I'm super excited about being able to find my love back to music like mm -hmm. I'm, I've I always created music and I always made music out of like survival but then I started to design and I started to do things and I learned a lot about myself and I think when you are really really like comfortable with designing and you can sit into a program and you can teach yourself things and you can do things you can teach yourself things about anything in life mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm trying to like, I'm excited for how to regain, like, the love and the things that made me J-Tips. Um, I think a lot of people are meeting me as J-Tips as a guy who has designed hundreds of caps and hundreds of baseball caps and things. And now I'm selling shoes and I'm, I'm signing autographs, signing sneaker boxes and stuff. But my love is music. So I want to be able to figure out how to turn these projects into a love for sound again, a love for just the appreciation for the arts. And um, it's to me, that's what I'm excited for. But the the fun stuff that that's very poetic, the fun stuff that people want to hear is, you know, just more new era collaborations and more shoes and very interested to see like how each one of my projects kind of stand the test of time. Like, how do they grow and how do they age and how does my next drop get bigger than the previous drop? Because you know, I, I think that I owe it to people to I look more like people than some of like the fashion people. So I want to be able to 
to continue to show people like, wow, this kid used to camp out for shoes on 34th Street with me. And wow, this kid used to work at Foot Locker and now he has a billboard in Foot Locker. So I want to be able to just continue to just take it up a notch and continue to grow. Yeah. Was okay. entrepreneurship something that you really pictured for yourself or was it something that you just found yourself in by proxy? I think living in New York, I tell people all the time, I told a good friend of mine recently, you have to know how to do at least five things to bring in some income in New York City. I think um, you have to be able to to hustle. You have to be able to pick up a hobby. You have to be able to um, maybe even learn how to get rid of things. Like you gotta, If you had a nice jacket for a long time, maybe you had to turn it into some cash or you got to turn it into a new jacket or you got to do a lot of different things. So I just think entrepreneurship, it kind of, it kind of fell on my lap because, you know, you want to live a certain type of way you want to live. You want to be able to experience certain things. You want to be able to buy those concert tickets when your favorite artist is on the road. So I wanted to live a life that I really wanted to live. So I wanted to really figure out how to get there. And I think I'm still figuring it out. I think even still to this day, I'm still trying to figure out how to how to master my craft. I feel like yeah. that is a lifelong process, right? And I feel like <laughs> yeah. that's the mindset that keeps you growing in that way, you know? Yeah. Um, what legacy, though, do you hope to leave behind through your work, both as a designer and a musician? Uh, the legacy is is that I want to leave behind is one that I share with others. I think I want people to, I want to speak life into other people. I, I always, mm -hmm. as much as I, I, I enjoy making money, for sure, and I love selling things, I want to always continue to inspire people that they can do it themselves. Like, I want my stuff to feel like I feel like I could have did that because I feel like the simplicity or that or the that nature that you kind of put on people, it kind of teaches them things that they maybe didn't know that they could do. Like, I I tell people this is amazing to me. I'm on live. I'm on Adobe Live when I was borrowing my friend's Adobe password for five years trying to teach myself how to do Photoshop. And I was watching videos at three o'clock in the morning trying to figure out how to vector a logo or be able to send something to a factory to so they understood what I was saying as far as like I want it to be this length and I want it to be horizontal and stuff so I want to show people that you just got to kind of continue to always teach yourself Look, try to learn something every day because those skills you never you're not sure how you're retaining them like you may not know tomorrow how you're going to make some money but a year from now you're going to be like wow I learned that from that J Tips talk on <laughs> on Adobe Live. So it's happening right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like you're kind of saying mm -hmm. that you invest in yourself and you're not sure when you're going to use that skill, but eventually yeah. it's going to come out and you're going to say, Oh wow, I'm so grateful yeah. that, you know, I was learning that yeah. we were, we were talking yesterday and you said something to me of like, you have to be careful, not limiting yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was just really insightful and wise. Yeah. Um, are there, did you learn that through experience or is this just, you know, uh, manifesting, you know, what you want for yourself <laughs> or where does that come from? Uh, to me, it comes from, you know, I'm a, I'm a very I'm a big believer that you have to learn from others, um, and it's not just watching others make mistakes. Sometimes it's watching others win. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. watching people people be successful. And I think a lot of times, and definitely in like the community that I grew up in, and uh, sometimes even my friend group, sometimes people set their own boundaries. I think sometimes people tell themselves. From day one, I can't do something. And I know it sounds very, very cliche and it sounds very simple, but a lot of times people put their own deadlines on things. Like I need to learn something by this week or I need to um, teach myself a task by the end of this year or I need to be the, the greatest of all time by the end of next year or I don't want to do something no more. And I think it's sometimes it's you fighting your own demons. And I've always been someone that, I've always tried to keep my chin high. Like I was a star. I've always tried to tell myself that I'm going to be this and I'm going to have my own shoe and I'm going to have my own hat and I'm going to be the biggest designer in the world. And I want people to come back to this moment and say, he he was saying it and we didn't believe it. Um, I want people to just to have, find that in themselves. I want people to find that in themselves. that if you don't tell yourself, you can't do something like really just figure it out, figure out the steps it's going to take and kind of make yourself hot, make yourself consistent, work on your own brand, work on being able to make yourself visible and do things. And, 
and don't let anything stop you. I just it sounds so it sounds so like uh, are we back? Sorry, it looks like it froze for a second there. Oh, uh, no worries. Yeah. <laughs> You were saying, um, don't let don't let yourself be limited by what you believe that you can do. Yeah, yeah. Don't. Uh, oh, I'm I'm try, how how much froze? I want to know how much I need to go back in. <laughs> I'm actually not sure. Um, give us the highlight. Go back maybe like oh, thirty oh, seconds. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I was just saying. I um, I just think a lot of times, people kind of just they build their own boundaries and they build mm. their own they build their own like just limits and stuff. And I know it sounds cliche and I know it doesn't sound like it sounds very elementary, but you can do whatever you put your mind on. Like I've, I've been a person always keeping my head high and telling myself that I can be the greatest at all things. And I think that I want people to feel that in themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, looking back, were there some challenges that you were able to overcome with this mentality or just challenges, sorry, in your career as well, that you were like, man, this was really hard. And for anyone who's going through that right now, like, I want to encourage you, like, I went through this, I made it through, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of advice. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think one thing about, uh, about like design work and um, about like a lot of the things that I've experienced through, through like just creating is sometimes you don't always feel like you belong in the room. Sometimes I've been in conversations, like even for this, like, I'll be honest, mm -hmm. like I, I work with sometimes some amazing people who know how to work illustrator and adobe and sometimes you look at my you look at yourself and you'd be like you can always be better you can always be better like even mm -hmm. when i work when i work with Sakani, it's like i sit in a room and i see some of the other collaborations they're working on and you're like you can be better you can be better and i think that's something that just natural i know comparison is something that we all do and comparison is like it it's almost like in the same realm as doubt but you have to be able to overcome those feelings and be like, but you do belong here. It's a reason why you, you are in this room. It's a reason why this conversation is happening. And it's a reason why you are shining in your light and you are ready for this moment. And I think a lot of people just got to overcome those, those feelings and those urges to feel like they don't belong sometimes, like whether it's for a promotion, whether it's for opportunity, whether it's a party, maybe you don't know a lot of people at, like you were invited here for a reason. Mm -hmm. You are you are one of the chosen ones. Um, and I just think some people kind of psych themselves out. And I think one thing that I've done to kind of convince myself of that is sometimes I try to, in all my offices and my homes and stuff, because I've moved a lot, I've changed offices a lot, I've done stuff. One thing I've always do is I try to hang up my accomplishments to remind myself of those dark days, what I've done. Like whether it mm -hmm. was a whether it was a flyer, whether it was a a award, whether it was a t-shirt, whether it was a wristband from a convention, whether it was just a, a greeting card at a at a brand dinner. Like sometimes I just kind of put them in the right places. So when I need a reminder that I'm on the right track, they're present. And that kind of ties back into design, like because all those stuff, all that stuff is design language and a lot of it is intentional and a lot of it is designed to have information on it. So that's something that you should always make sure is in everything you design as well, too, that the information is there because it's going to be a day where that information is going to bring somebody's spirits up. So yeah, it's, it's design. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that, about design. It, it's just part of this world. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, chat is asking, are there any designers that you're looking for insp or look, looking to for inspiration currently? Um, any designs or designers? Or designers, yeah. Anyone who's really, yeah, mm. catching your eye. Uh, I I know it's a few. Um, I really, I really love. Um, like right now, I love like the brand Awake. I love the brand. I I love even still Virgil. Um, I love Ronnie Feig. I love. Um, trying. Uh, I love like even like high end. I'm getting into like really appreciating like high end stuff. Like I don't indulge in it so much, but I love like the execution of like Bottega. Mm -hmm. I love like even like what Louis Vuitton is doing with like Pharrell and and even the new Tyler Creator stuff and Kid Super. Um, I love, I love like just being able to 
kind of pick up something and be able to really admire it. I, lo I even love what other shoe brands are doing. Like I love what like the collab team at like New Balance is doing. I love like just kind of being able to pay attention to like the art of what everybody has going on. Not so much wanting to own things, but being able to just say like, wow, I love how this person goes from project to project. Or I love how this person is able to tell stories that seem very, very flushed out. Um, so I, I love that. I'm, I don't want to leave anybody out because I feel like I'll get off of this and I'll be like, wow, if I didn't say this person. That's crazy. Um, yeah, but this, I think of course, like Joe Fresh Goods and, mm -hmm. and, and like Jerry Lorenzo and stuff. Like I, I love a lot of different people that are putting in a lot of different thought into their products right now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here's going to be a follow-up question, which I don't know, but is there anything that recently an unexpected brand that was uh, launching a, maybe a campaign or a story that you didn't expect to catch your eye and you thought, Oh, I didn't think I would see that brand doing something like that. Um, is there anything that comes to mind when you're thinking about that? Um, it has to, I, I feel, I feel like there's something on like the tip of my, my tongue. Um, it's okay if there's nothing there, but I just think sometimes, <laughs> you know, you get inspiration, you think, oh, I didn't, I didn't yeah. expect to see it from so-and-so. And I was just curious if you had anything. So no worries uh, at all if you don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't, I, if, if it comes back up, I'll mention it, but it's, it's definitely, I, I think seeing a lot of, a lot of like, maybe non-fashion companies getting into like yeah. a fashion space cool. sometimes really really like I didn't expect that like I would see a Dunkin Donuts collaboration or ad and I would I would be really inspired I'd be like yeah I would I wouldn't see that coming right I would, yeah I wouldn't see it there's been times I've been in restaurants and I'm like do you sell the shirt that you guys are wearing because you just wouldn't expect that design language or that feeling stuff so I think something like that, but I, yeah. if, it, if it pops back up, I'll mention it for sure. Okay, perfect, perfect. <laughs> yeah. So you have such incredible advice, I feel like, and such mm -hmm. uh, kind words of wisdom. If mm -hmm. anyone was just starting off in their career and you had the opportunity to like speak with them, what would you say to them? Like, hey, this is how you should start out or don't be afraid of this. I think if, if anybody was starting out, the first thing I would ask them is like what 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 their why is. Like what, what is the, what is the reason why you want to do something? And I think if it's to, you know, I want to start a brand because I want to get more design jobs. So, oh, you want more design jobs. So if your why is more design jobs, then I would recommend them to, you know, learn a little bit more about like how to expand their catalog and like even like the adobe programs like not trying to tie everything back to the adobe stuff but <laughs> just if that was their why i would teach them how to you know just make sure you polish and you learn everything and you know how to do things but if someone was like hey i just want to get into clothes i don't really know how to design i the first thing i would kind of tell them is is i always used to hear a quote that was like if you want to hide something hide it in a book because a lot of people don't really read um so I've been really picking up a lot of different like design books and mm. furniture books and design books. And it helps me learn a lot about like text, text, textures and fabric and just different things. And I think you, when you find kind of like your niche and what you like, if, if I want to make clothes, cause my favorite brand is Gucci, then figure out how that those clothes are being made. Like I'm not saying copy them, but you can learn a lot about the process and your process and be able to, to get it going so I just think learning I think being a student of the game asking questions mm -hmm. not being afraid is important yeah, yeah. and not admitting or not being afraid yeah. to admit like oh man there's more I can learn in this area right yeah I love that um so creative industry is a lot about collaboration and working with other artists mm -hmm. how do you approach working on collaborations and combining your talents with other people to me I, collaborations are important because it has to show both sides and both sides, what their strengths are. Um, so usually when I collaborate with someone, I really want to see what their vision is for the entire pro project and how I can just throw my sauce on it. Where I know a lot of times people are trying to figure out how to make things mesh and how to, how do you do so? Because a lot of designers are very, have really strong design language, like someone that just like, it's going to completely dominate this graphic, but how do you add your spice to it? Um, and I just think it's a, how do you be able to 
I think, of course, it's the upside of how do you take this person's audience, how do you add your audience, and how do you just make the most money. But to me, I've always felt like how do you complement each other's style and how do you make something better? Like if this person does this all the time and this is what they're into, how do you give them some type of change into their thing? So me, when I do collaborations, I like to quarterback. I try to go by like a like a Virgil kind of 3% rule. Like you just need to change things a little bit. And sometimes it has a whole different flair to it. So it's like, I don't want to just, like just because I collabed with another artist, go do the craziest thing in the world or we go paint buildings, even though we don't never paint buildings. I want to mm -hmm. be able to, like if this person already does something and I already do something, how do you make it just a little bit different? Like right. it's just... Like how do how do you kind of just add each other's ingredients into the pot a little bit? Definitely. Did that take some finessing to get into that kind of um, melding together, or would, did that come really naturally to you? Yeah, of course. Because when you do collaborations, you're also dealing with human beings. You're dealing with personalities. Yeah. You're dealing with people who have um, they have built a name for themselves, or they have a, a audience that expects something from them in particular. Even for mine, so you want to always let people know without even having to explain what's the beauty of it. Like I, if I tell people, oh well, yeah, I worked with Saucony and I did this and I did that. My favorite part is when I get to show them, when I get to show them that this is what I worked on and this is, this is what I was spending all those hours working on. And they just understand right away. So it's like, how do you take what's, some, what's already working and make it better? That's always been my technique. For people who have that collaboration and have that shoe, is there like a secret part to the design or like one part of the design <laughs> that you're like, that's the part that's my favorite that you want to call out? Uh, I think my favorite part, which is kind of like hidden in plain sight, is just the on my first shoe, just the floral design. Mm -hmm. I wish we wasn't having our issues and I can just pull it up and show everybody. But right. it's the the floral design of the shoe is to me, it's, it's a testament of just me being like the flower that blossom out of, out of like tough circumstances, out mm -hmm. of uh, the concrete and making something beautiful. And I think maybe I haven't always explained why a lot of my designs have so much color. And it's because the rest of our lives are always so dark and gray and, and we deal with a lot of things in our lives until it's time to be creative. And then we, we sauce it up. So I've always just tried to throw flowers into my design because I want just, I don't think you've ever seen flowers and you weren't planning on having a good day. I don't think you wouldn't want to put f flowers on your feet if you weren't going to have a good day. So if I need to have a good day, I want you to wear this shoe. So that's probably just something hiding in plain sight. Like as much as it's a nice decoration, it's intentional. It's a, it's an intentional pick me upper. It's an intentional like dose of like just trying to put someone in a better vibe, better mood. Yeah. That's beautiful. I would not have known that story. So thank you so much for sharing that. <laughs> oh, no problem. Um, are there any resources or books or mentors that have played a significant role? I know you're saying you attended mm -hmm. YouTube University, but outside of that, um, <laughs> what are some really impactful yeah, pieces of literature or anything? Um, you know, not even literature. Something that was very impactful yeah. for me is I signed up for, for a, a sneaker school program through um, a program called Yellow, Bri Yellow Brick. And it had about like 10 lessons on just very intentional things in this sneaker space that were like, if you build your own store, how would it look? Mm. If you made your own sneaker, how would it look? If you was to hire a whole staff and run a company, what would be your business plan? Who would beat your? And I just think that from those little techniques, I kind of looked at myself and I was like, wow, this is something that um, these are questions that, you really, I really need to answer. I've always learned from like people in the industry um, that's always told me, it's like everybody gets their chance, even if it's a five minute interview or you meet someone at a coffee shop or you're at a bar and, and someone is next to you that holds a high position at a company and you just don't know what to say. Like if someone may ask you a question right now and you have to have an answer for it. So if your dream, your dream can be that, close to you someone can just ask you what you want to do oh what's your plans oh, what's your goals and if you don't you have to be able to say the right thing you got to already know like it could be that close to you so I've always just tried to be intentional on knowing everything that I wanted everything that I wanted to accomplish everything I wanted to 
to set out to do? Like if someone was to tell me right now, hey, if you if Nike called you tomorrow, what shoe would you want to design and how would you want it to be released and what would you want to look? Sometimes you got to just know that. Sometimes it just has to be in the back of your mind because that conversation can end in five minutes and never happen again for the rest of your life. So you just I just think that that program kind of taught me to just stay ready. You don't got to get ready if you stay ready. Yeah, yeah, that's real. That's real. What? Sorry, as you're uh, talking, I was thinking, I'm like, what's next for you? What? What is that answer for you then? So say you had that call. What mm -hmm. is it that you're saying that you want to do next? To me, I want to be a, a creative director of mm -hmm. a brand. I think I think collaboration for so long, they only can go so far. I think there will, and I'm speaking directly to everyone listening, anybody that's going to replay this later or listening now, like there will be J Tips fatigue. There will be uh who is the next J Tips. There will be mm. who is the next of every single creator. So it's like I want that to be what's next for me. I want what's next for me to be how to design in a, a way that it affects more change and it affects more doors and it affects more of the sneaker climbing. And it's not just a kind of like a a shot in a bucket. Like I want it to be something that's that I control like an entire line and I control an entire like thought process. And I'm making sure that my partners are being intentional and they're doing things in a community and the design and the good work reflects like the hard work that everybody puts in and stuff. I just want to be able to, to definitely scale my business and also scale my, my brand and the brand of J tips and also the brand of savior worldwide at the same time, but also a bigger role at a company other than just a, uh, this company X J tips. Right. You know? Right. So uh, <laughs> more of it is what you're saying. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So we have only about five minutes left here. So chat, mm -hmm. if you have any last questions or comments that you want to add, definitely drop them in. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone is just talking about their favorite shoes in chat right now <laughs> and what influence you've had on that and their favorites. So definitely go back and look at those because there's a lot there. Um, so with your first collaboration that you had, mm -hmm. um, how did that impact your career and visibility within the shoe industry? Um, one, one thing about one thing about having the opportunity that I had with Saucony, um, I knew that the chips were against me. I knew that my first opportunity was with a company that may may not be everyone's in everyone's closet, may not be everyone's first first choice when it's time to get some money for a back to school shoe or when, you know, you gotta buy a Christmas gift. So I knew that what I needed to do, my marketing, my design, my story, my hard work, my release, my assets, my photo shoot my video, my engagement on social media need, needed to be 20 times better and more efficient and more intentional than anything that anybody else might have been doing at the time. So just trying to stay on top of it and on top of it and stuff. And it, just because I, you got to treat it like you may never get this opportunity again. And you want to treat it like you were deserving of this opportunity. And you also wanted to make people not discount it. Like, oh, well, you made a shoe, but you made it with them. I wanted to just do something that it felt rich and it felt important and it felt like I can do it. And it felt like, wow, this is that Michael Jordan air moment. This is that Joe Freshka's New Balance moment. This is that Ronnie Feig Asics moment. It's somebody working with a company that had just as much to prove as they did and mm -hmm. being able to kind of come out on top of it. And I feel like that was important to me with my first shoe. My first shoe was to just kind of prove all things. And, you know, those that are familiar with what I got going on, you know, we, we got a lot of recognition towards the end of the year for shoes of the year. And we were definitely a lot of people's top 10. So of probably thousands of shoes that came out last year. So I'm appreciative to know that the hard work had a, uh, it stood out. Speaking yeah. of that, yeah. you you won an award, is that correct? For yeah. do you want to tell me a little bit more? How did it feel to receive the award? Um, and yeah, <laughs> the recognition. It felt amazing. It felt amazing. Um, because it's not something that you you set out for. I think mm -hmm. when when I put together my mood board and when I put together my workflow, it didn't have like recognition in it. It had like, you know, just if you I'm a big believer that if you build, if you build it, they'll come. 
So it was kind of like if you just do all the hard work, everything else is an extra. So just to be able to get like a call, a phone call and um, saying that I was going to be rewarded as the, the collaboration of the year, it just felt it felt amazing because it to me, it justified the hard work. It justified the hurdles. It justified the debt. <laughs> it justified the the sleepless nights. Like people see on Instagram, they see me with my first shoe go from Kentucky to New York to to L.A. to Houston to Atlanta back to New York again. And I may be skipping somewhere, but they don't see like the the Uber fees and they don't see the hotels and they don't see the people telling you that maybe you don't have to do that one or people telling you that, you know, just wait for it to drop online or just, you know, enjoy your money or do stuff. But it justified it all. It justified, you know, just every single piece of pushback or every single piece of, Hey, um, I really love this picture. Can this be the one we post? I really love this asset. Can this be the one we, we do? I really love this store. Can If they're not going to email you guys back, can I shoot a DM? Like It just justified it all. So I think just to be able to to know that everything that you sacrificed, like it was rewarded, that was a great feeling. Like, And I know like, you know, a lot of people may be familiar with like the Grammys and the Oscars and stuff, and they'd be like, hey, like the award doesn't mean anything, but I know when you really put so much on the line and someone calls your name on that stage that I felt I felt it for the rest of my life. I know I felt it. So well deserved. Okay. Your work is yeah. incredible Thank and you. definitely deserving of all of the awards. <laughs> um, everyone in chat <laughs> is suggesting that there should be a J Tip Solom or Salomon collaboration, <laughs> and everyone thinks it'd be so crazy. <laughs> so maybe we'll put that out there in case. Yeah, um, you know, you know, we so they they know my number. <laughs> yeah, perfect, perfect. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're coming down to the final minutes here. So, J Tips, mm -hmm. if there's any like final piece of information or advice that you want to leave everyone with, what would that be? To just keep learning. Yeah. Keep keep trying to learn new things. Um, I follow about forty seven Instagrams that just show me different tricks on Photoshop and Illustrator and how to like do different marketing on my website and stuff. I wish I could have showed you guys some some stuff today. Maybe we could do it again sometime. But it's it's just I think never stop learning. Even no matter how much money's in your bank account. No matter what you're feeling on the inside, never stop teaching yourself something because it'll come in handy eventually. It'll even if it comes in handy just to hire someone and now you know how it goes so that you can tell them what to do. Like it's it, you know, it works. It comes in handy. So just keep learning, keep teaching yourself new things because the world is gonna keep changing and you know, we gotta change with it. We definitely yeah. need to have you back to see within the file. So I'm sorry yeah. about for the tech issues today because you had some really incredible work prepared. So we definitely yeah. need to have you back uh, yeah. to see more of that. So everyone, uh -huh. thank you so much for uh, joining in chat. J-Tips, thank you for such an incredible uh -huh. interview. Um, Corey Allen Hall is going to be up next teaching typography mm -hmm. and how to mm -hmm. manipulate hierarchy and uh -huh. uh, learn more about that. So definitely stick around on the stream wherever you are. And thank you so much for joining today. We really appreciated everyone who came. So, yep. Yeah. Thank you.